All right, let's dive in. Today we're heading to Ireland. Oh, fantastic. Specifically, we're going to be looking at Burr Castle and a few other cool spots around the country. That's great. We're using the Love Ireland newsletter, uh. which focuses on Irish travel and culture. Okay, yeah. I'm so excited to unpack this with you. Sounds great. The newsletter really emphasizes the history of Burr Castle, but it seems like the gardens are a major highlight. Oh, yeah, for sure. Burr Castle is known for its history. Yeah. But I think what really sets it apart is its gardens. Over 2,000 plant species, they say? Yeah. That's incredible. That's a lot of plants. It is. I've always wondered what makes a garden worthy of the National Heritage Garden designation. Oh, that's a good question. What does that actually mean? Well, it means that the gardens are considered to be um, of exceptional national importance. So it's not just about being pretty. No, no, it's not just about being pretty. They also play a significant role in conserving biodiversity. Oh, okay. And showcasing Ireland's horticultural heritage. Yeah, you could almost think of them as a living museum. Wow, so while the sheer number of plant species is impressive, yeah. it's also about their history, their yeah. design, right. and the role they play in conservation. Exactly, like a tapestry of botanical treasures collected over centuries. I love that. And it's not just quantity, but also rarity. They have, for example, a Chilean firebush there, mm. which is one of the oldest of its kind in Europe. Right. Dates back to the early 1900s. That's incredible. Yeah. Sounds like a plant lover's paradise. It is. The newsletter also talks about County Wicklow, calling it the Garden of Ireland. Is yeah. it really that beautiful? Yeah, well, Garden of Ireland might sound a bit, you know, hyperbolic. Yeah. But honestly, it's incredibly diverse. It has rolling hills, lush valleys, picturesque lakes, and mountains that honestly just seem to touch the sky. Wow, it really does sound like something out of a storybook. It is, it is. What are some must-see spots in Wicklow? Oh, well, you have to go to Glendalough. It's a monastic city, actually. Mm. Dating back to the 6th century, wow. founded by St. Kevin, you can wander through the ruins of churches, round towers, stone crosses. You can just, like, feel the presence of the monks who lived and worshipped there you know, centuries ago. I can only imagine. It's a truly captivating place. Wow. What about for someone who wants something maybe a bit more grand? Oh, then you have to go to Power Squirt Estate. Okay. It has sprawling gardens, including one of the highest waterfalls in Ireland. Oh, wow. You'll also find these hidden treasures tucked away, like a Japanese garden and an Italian garden, each with its own, you know, unique charm. I love that. Power Squirt is all about, you know, experiencing a designed landscape. It's meant to evoke a sense of wonder and awe. That sounds incredible. Yeah. So Wicklow has a little something for everyone, from the history buffs to the nature lovers. Absolutely. And speaking of nature, we can't forget Killarney National Park. Oh, yeah. The newsletter says it's over 26,000 acres. Yeah, that's huge. That's bigger than some cities. Yeah, that's a testament to Ireland's commitment to preserving its natural heritage. I agree. It showcases a remarkable diversity of landscapes. Okay. From the rugged peaks of McGillicuddy's Reeks, which is Ireland's highest mountain range, wow. to the serene beauty of the lakes of Killarney. You could spend days exploring its woodlands, waterfalls, and valleys and still only scratch the surface. It sounds incredible. It is. I'm sensing a theme here. Yeah. It seems like Ireland just effortlessly blends breathtaking nature with captivating historical sites. You're absolutely right. Which is really cool. Yeah, and that blend extends to the culture, too. Oh, for sure. When you think of Ireland, what's one of the first things that comes to mind? The music. Exactly. And it's not just something you listen to. It's deeply ingrained in the culture. Soaking in the atmosphere of a traditional music session in a cozy pub is, like, essential to the Irish experience. I can imagine. The newsletter recommends Matt Malloy's pub in Westport. Okay. Now, what's interesting here is that Matt Malloy himself is a renowned musician. Oh, wow. A flute player for the iconic Irish band, The Chieftains. So it's not just any pub. It has a real musical legacy behind it. Exactly. Picture this. You step into a dimly lit pub, the sounds of traditional Irish music all around you. A fiddler, a badran player, creating this tapestry of lively tunes. You might even hear the haunting melodies of Yulian pipes, which are the traditional Irish bagpipes. Wow. You grab a pint of Guinness and you just let the music wash over you. That sounds magical. It is. Especially for someone who wants to really get that authentic Irish experience. Ah, the craic. Yes. It's more than just fun. It's this feeling of warmth, connection, and shared enjoyment. 
It's the heart and soul of Irish social life. And there's really no better place to experience it than in a traditional pub like Matt Malloy's. Now, before we go any further, I think we need to address a food myth that the Love Ireland newsletter brought up. Okay. I had no idea that corned beef and cabbage, you know, that staple of St. Patrick's Day celebrations, might not be as Irish as we think. <laughs> it's one of those fascinating things, how food traditions evolve, you know? Yeah. Corned beef and cabbage, as we know it today, actually has its roots in Irish-American history. Oh, interesting. Rather than being a dish brought over directly from Ireland. Okay, so tell me more. Think about the 19th century. You have these Irish immigrants, particularly in New York City, and they often found themselves living in close proximity to Jewish communities. Oh, okay. Back then, pork was common in Ireland. Okay. But it was really expensive in America. Right. So Irish immigrants started turning to corned beef, which was more affordable. Made sense. And readily available from Jewish delis. Okay. And over time, that combination of corned beef and cabbage became a symbol of Irish American identity. Oh, that's interesting. Especially around St. Patrick's Day. So it's not that corned beef and cabbage isn't Irish at all. Right. It's more that it evolved into a cultural dish in a different place. Exactly. It reminds us that cultures are constantly interacting and influencing each other. Yeah. Even through something as simple as food. This deep dive is already full of surprises. I'm learning so much about Ireland. It's a fascinating place. And uh, we've only just scratched the surface. I know, right? <laughs> We've explored the gardens of Burr Castle, touched on the beauty of County Wicklow, and even debunked a food myth. But there's so much more to Burr Castle. Let's take a closer look at its incredible astronomical legacy. Okay, that sounds interesting. You won't believe what the Parsons family, who called Burr Castle home, achieved. So Burr Castle's astronomical legacy, it's a fascinating story. Okay, I'm all ears. The newsletter mentioned the Parsons family. Right but it didn't really go into their connection to astronomy. Right, well, the Parsons family, the Earls of Ross, they were true visionaries. Oh, wow. They weren't content with just living in this beautiful castle. Right. They wanted to push the boundaries of human knowledge. Okay. Specifically in the field of astronomy. That's amazing. Were they all astronomers? Well, not all of them. Okay. But one family member truly stands out. William Parsons, the third Earl of Ross. Brilliant engineer and astronomer. Wow. And in the 1840s, Get this, he constructed the largest telescope in the world. No way. The largest in the world. Right here at Burr Castle. Talk about thinking big. I know, right? Yeah. It was a feat of engineering that honestly captivated the world. Picture this. Okay. A massive reflecting telescope with a 72-inch mirror. Wow. Housed within these gigantic walls that stood between the castle and the river. Wow. They called it the Leviathan of Parsonstown. I love that. And it was a sight to behold. What kinds of things did he discover with this Leviathan? Well, the Leviathan allowed him to peer deeper into the cosmos than anyone before him. Oh, wow. He made groundbreaking observations of distant galaxies and nebulae. In fact, he was the first to observe the spiral structure of galaxies. Wow. Which, you know, revolutionized our understanding of the universe. Okay. Before that, galaxies were just thought to be fuzzy blobs. Right. But Parsons, he revealed their intricate swirling designs. So Burr Castle wasn't just a home. It was a place where our understanding of the universe was fundamentally changed. That's a great way to put it. And the Parsons family's passion for astronomy wasn't limited to just William. Oh. His son, Lawrence Parsons, the fourth Earl, okay. continued his work making significant contributions to the field of astrophysics. Wow. And even later, Mary Parsons, the wife of the sixth Earl, okay. she carried on that legacy in the early 20th century. Wow. A family legacy spanning generations. Exactly. What did Mary Parsons do? She was a skilled astrophotographer. Oh, wow. Her work beautifully captured the wonders of the night sky. She used specialized cameras attached to the Leviathan telescope to capture these stunning images of celestial objects. Wow, that's amazing. Showcasing the beauty of the cosmos in a whole new way. So Burke Castle was not just a place for observation. It was also a place for capturing and sharing the beauty of the universe through art. Exactly. And if you visit Burr Castle today, you can still see the Leviathan Telescope. Huh. Walk in the footsteps of these remarkable astronomers. That's so cool. And even visit a science center dedicated to their work. Now I'm really starting to understand why Burr Castle is so much more than just a pretty castle. I know, right? It's a place where history, science, and the pursuit of knowledge 
all intertwined. Exactly. And speaking of intertwining, remember those incredible gardens we talked about earlier? Yes. Well, there's a fascinating connection between the gardens and Mary Parsons astrophotography. Oh, okay, I'm intrigued. Well, imagine this. Mary Parsons, captivated by the beauty of the night sky, yeah. sets up her equipment amidst these blooming wonders of the Burr Castle Gardens. Oh. The vibrant colors of the flowers, the scent of exotic plants, wow. the gentle rustling of leaves. This created this unique and inspiring backdrop for her astrophotography. It's beautiful imagery, the earthly beauty with the... Uh... The celestial wonders of the cosmos. It's as if the gardens themselves inspired her to capture the beauty of the stars. That's cool. And remember that Chilean fire bush we mentioned? It blooms in late spring, casting this vibrant red glow. Mm -hmm. That must have been a striking contrast to the dark night sky. I wonder if she ever turned her lens towards the gardens as well, you know? It's certainly a possibility. It speaks to that interconnectedness of everything thing at Burr Castle. Yeah. Huh. You know, the gardens weren't just a separate entity. They were mm -hmm. part of the very fabric of life and discovery at the castle. Love that. So the gardens, we know there are over 2,000 plant species, right. but what else makes them so special? Yeah, what else? It's not just about the diversity of plants. Uh -huh. It's about the history and design. Right. These gardens have been evolving for centuries, with each generation of the Parsons family adding their own touch. Oh. You'll find formal gardens with these perfectly manicured lawns and vibrant flower beds. Oh, wow. Alongside woodland walks that wind through towering trees and hidden grottos. Oh. They even have a lake. Ooh. rivers, and a stunning waterfall, all adding to this magical atmosphere. It sounds incredible. But I have a question. Yeah. With so many different species from all over the world, yeah. how do they keep everything thriving in the Irish climate? That's where that National Heritage Garden designation comes into play again. Oh, okay. It signifies a real commitment to conservation okay. and expert horticultural practices. Makes sense. They have a dedicated team of gardeners at Burr Castle. Oh, wow. They work tirelessly to maintain these gardens, yeah. ensuring they remain this vibrant and thriving ecosystem. That's right. They're really passionate about preserving the legacy of the Parsons family okay. and educating visitors about the importance of plant conservation. So it's not just a feast for the eyes. No. It's also an opportunity to learn about the natural world and the efforts to protect it. Exactly. It sounds like Bird Castle is a place where beauty and knowledge go hand in hand. I think that's a perfect way to put it. But wait, there's more to explore in Ireland? Oh, there is. Remember County Wicklow, the Garden of Ireland? Let's dive a little deeper into what makes it such a must-see destination. So, County Wicklow, Garden of Ireland. Yeah. That's a pretty big claim. It is, but, you know, Wicklow really lives up to it. Yeah. It's not just about the landscapes. It's about the history. Right. The stories, the experiences that are woven into the county. Okay, so what's a must-see that really captures that, that blend of history and natural beauty. Well, you can't talk about Wicklow without mentioning Glendalough. Oh, yeah, yeah. That ancient monastic city. Right, from the 6th century. Exactly, founded by St. Kevin. Yeah. Imagine stepping back in time. Okay. Wandering through the ruins of this settlement. You'll see a perfectly preserved round tower. Wow. A testament to that early Irish architecture. Yeah. The remains of St. Kevin's Kitchen, the small stone church that has just stood the test of time. It sounds incredible. As you walk among these ruins, surrounded by those rolling hills and that serene lake, yeah. you really understand why Glendalough has been a place of pilgrimage and sanctuary for over a thousand years. It's a place where history and nature really intertwine. So Glendalough is on my list. Good. What about something a little more, well, grand? Power Scourt Estate. Great. It's a masterpiece of landscape design. Hmm. Imagine strolling through these meticulously manicured gardens, okay. each with their own theme. Italian, Japanese, walled gardens. Wow. Even a pepper pot tower with these panoramic views. Oh, wow. And then you come across Power Scourt Waterfall, cascading down a rocky cliff face. It's a sight that'll take your breath away. <laughs> You had me at Waterfall. It's really something. Wicklow's not just historical sites and grand estates, is it? What about those mountains? Ah, 
The Wicklow Mountains National Park. Yes. A hiker's paradise. Absolutely. Trails for all levels, from leisurely walks to some, you know, challenging climbs. Okay. You can trek through valleys carved by ancient glaciers, climb to the summit of Sugarloaf Mountain for these breathtaking views, or explore the forests. Oh, wow. You might even spot red deer. Really? Or the elusive Irish hare. That's incredible. It's a special place. So Wicklow has something for everyone. It really does. From history buffs to nature enthusiasts. Before we move on from Wicklow, yeah. is there anything truly unique to Wicklow that you wouldn't find anywhere else in Ireland? That's a great question. I think one thing that really sets it apart is its proximity to Dublin. Ah, okay. You can easily escape the city yeah. and find yourself in this natural wonderland within an hour's drive. That's amazing. It's the perfect place to find peace and tranquility without going too far off the beaten path. Makes it very appealing, especially if you have limited time. Yeah. Killarney National Park, which the newsletter also highlighted. Yeah. Over 26,000 acres. Where do you even begin with a place that size? Oh, gosh. You could spend a week there and still only scratch the surface. What? For those with limited time, I'd recommend focusing on the lakes of Killarney. Imagine gliding across the tranquil waters of Loch Lean, Okay. The largest of the three lakes. Yeah. Surrounded by mountains that just rise out of the water. Wow. You can rent a boat. Go kayaking. That sounds lovely. Take a horse-drawn carriage ride along the Gap of Dunlow, this narrow mountain pass carved by glaciers. That's incredible. It's beautiful. But what if you'd rather be on foot? Oh, Killarney's got you covered. Okay. There are miles of hiking trails winding through ancient oak and yew forests. Oh, wow. Leading to hidden waterfalls. Okay. Breathtaking viewpoints. That sounds amazing. Torque Waterfall's a must-see. It cascades down this rocky gorge amidst lush vegetation. Wow. And for the adventurous, there's the climb to Karatu Hill, okay. Ireland's highest peak. I don't know if I'm that adventurous. Well, maybe just the waterfall then? Maybe, yeah. So, Killarney, connect with nature, whether you're on the water or on the trails. Exactly. And before we wrap up... Yeah. I want to circle back to Irish music. Oh, yeah. Matt Malloy's Pub in Westport. Great spot. What makes this place so special? It's more than just a pub. It's a real embodiment of Irish music and culture. Okay. Imagine stepping into this cozy, dimly lit space. Yeah. The walls are adorned with musical instruments, photos of legendary Irish musicians. You find a seat near the fireplace. Oh, that's nice. Order a pint of Guinness. And as you take your first sip yeah the music begins okay i'm there you might hear the fiddle the bodrandrum maybe even the ilian pipes well, and what's really special yeah you might even catch matt malloy himself no way the flute player for the chieftains joining in that would be incredible it's a place where you can really soak in that craic we were talking about Thomas the craic. more than just having a good time you know it's about connecting with people yeah. sharing stories yeah. enjoying that irish hospitality but that warmth and Matt Malloy's The Craic just flows as freely as the Guinness. Oh, I love that. It's a great spot. This has been an incredible journey. It has. Through Ireland. Yeah. Castles, gardens, mountains, lakes. We even debunked a food myth. I know, right? It's been great. What stands out to you the most? The diversity of experiences that Ireland has to offer. Right. You can step back in time at those monastic sites. Yeah. Be in awe of these stunning landscapes and just immerse yourself in that vibrant culture. The music, the storytelling. It's a country that truly has something for everyone. I couldn't agree more. And for you, our listener, what kind of Irish adventure will you create? Will you wander through the ruins of Glendalough, lose yourself in the gardens of Powers Court Estate, or find your craic at a cozy pub listening to traditional music? The possibilities are endless. So go explore. Discover the magic of the Emerald Isle. Until next time, keep exploring.